All right, so a client has brought me their uh, HP laptop. Um, and what it's doing is, if you turn it on, it comes up and gives video, and it starts booting into Windows, but it just uh, does the spinny um, dots forever. If you turn it off a couple of times, it'll go into automatic repair, but that does not help. What they do, what they told me is that um, one of the RAM sticks in the computer needed to be replaced, and I wasn't sure how they knew that. Um, I had a, a sneaking suspicion that uh, they ran the diagnostics, so uh, I did that too, and I'll do that now. I'm going to go ahead. It's, it's diagnosing computer. It's going to say it uh, it can't fix it um, and you know try something else. So I'm just going to hold down the power button on it, and on a... So five seconds about, it'll actually turn off. Turn it back on. On an HP computer, most of them, if you press escape multiple times as they come on, it will do pausing startup and give you options. One of which is system diagnostics by pressing F2, which I'm going to do. And I'm going to choose system tests and extensive. So here's the list of checks it's going to do, one of which is the uh, memory extensive check. I'm going to click run once. All right, so it took about 10 minutes to get through running the test before it got to this, but we're getting a memory extensive check failed. There's a failure ID. That uh, 68C, that number there, I put that into Google, didn't find anything useful. The product ID, um, I put that into Google and it just led me back to this model number of this laptop, which is a, um, it's an HP 15-DB0061CL. And it says memory module one, bottom slot one left, is the one that has failed. So I'm going to turn this thing off, disconnect power, and we'll see about opening it up. So it's got a DVD drive. That's definitely got a, almost certainly needs to come out. So that's one screw and then slide it out and I will put that screw next to it. There's probably some screws under this bumper. If you want to look up how to open up your particular model of a laptop or this one, um, if you do a search for the model number of the computer, on Google and the words service manual, it will usually take you right to the a PDF where you can learn how to open it up. You can also go to the HP website and go to support, put in the model number of your laptop and it will lead you to a support article um, with a PDF. Oh, okay, yeah, so there's four screws under here. There's probably more under here, but when it came off, it left behind the adhesive. So I'm going to See about taking that out, and I'll need to lay that back down. Usually the adhesive sticks with the bumper, but it did not this time. Let's go ahead and take off the bottom bumper too. So typically when RAM sticks fail, um, the symptom is that the computer won't come on and show any video. Basically it just doesn't start up, it doesn't work. And then you go through the process of figuring out if it's the RAM stick or RAM sticks uh, that failed. Usually it's just one. And sometimes a computer only has one RAM stick, so it kind of narrows it down for you. This thing working enough to where it was able to run a diagnostic and then identify the RAM stick that it failed um, is unusual. So I'm going to go through and take all the screws out the bottom. If you've got a magnetic tip that's losing its uh, magnetism, you can get one of these from Amazon. I'll try and put a link to uh, probably not this one, but a similar one. Um, so it magnetizes or demagnetizes. And basically you just stick the, uh, the tip through a, uh, a hole where it fits and just kind of do that, just in and out. And you generally get better magnetism, although not always. 
these still aren't wanting to come out very, very easily, but it can help. Yeah, helped a little bit. And all these screws are the same size. And there's one in front, kind of at an, at a, at an angle. Take it out. All right, so next step is just to find a gap in the plastic and use a opening tool of some kind. This is a nylon spudger. Most likely what's gonna happen here is this, um, the bottom of the laptop is going to come off. But on some models, the, um, the top comes out and there's um, ribbon cables you have to take off um, that connect like the, uh, the trackpad and the, uh, the keyboard to the motherboard. So just know that that's a possibility. Looks like there was an impact here. There's a little indentation on both pieces of plastic. Turn this around and come at it this way. I'm just kind of lifting up on what's open already and then just going around. That should get it. All right, so back upside down. And let's see if it comes apart. You know, this, this thing's pretty cracked up. It's got a crack there. It's got a crack on the side. And even the uh, the top part has a crack on it. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of lifting up and seeing how it's going to come apart. And yeah, the bottom's going to come off. The motherboard and the battery and everything like that is staying with the uh, uh, the palm rest. And it's cracked there too. back here that needed to come off. Feels like there's one right here that doesn't want to let go of, but there's no screws. And if the keyboard was meant to come out, there would be um, a, uh, a bit of a, a gap in the plastic that I would then take the keyboard off um, and then possibly some screws underneath it. But this is all one piece, this trackpad. So it's just it's just some extra holdy uh, clips in there. Just kind of wiggle it off. There we go. Okay. Right. Well, um, there's one RAM stick. There's an option to put a second one. But I believe it did say left. It also called it slot one. It's, so to take out a RAM stick, you kind of uh, push out on these metal clips. It'll pop up and you take it out. And it is labeled um, a one at the end of that model number right there, or that, that set of numbers, and a two there. So I'm pretty sure that uh, the computer is telling us that this has failed. And it is an eight gigabyte stick of DDR4. It's called PC4. And 2666 is the megahertz it runs at. Let's see if I've got a replacement for it. Okay, so we've got a, a 16 gigabyte stick, looks like, which is 2666, or an 8 gigabyte stick, which is 2400 megahertz. It's not much of a difference in speed there. Let's see, I've got another one here. What is this? That's another 8 gigabyte. 2400. Right, well, let me give them a call and see if they want me to go ahead and upgrade them to uh, a 16 gigabyte stick or stick with the 8. The difference between 2400 and 2600 or 2666 
is not going to be felt using the computer. That's just not a big enough uh, difference. But the 8 versus 16, they might be able to tell the difference. Plus, you know, it's more for the 16. So I'll be right back. Okay, they're going to go with the uh, 8 gigabyte. Uh, let's see. Come on out. Okay, so I'm just going to put it back into the same slot. There's a notch in the RAM that matches up with a bit of plastic on the slot, so you can't put it in the wrong way, like backwards. So you put it in at about a 30 degree angle from the motherboard. Push it in, and then down on both sides. And then these clips come and hold it in place. It's fairly dirty on the inside. I'm going to blow some dust out of it. And let's see. It might be a good idea to go ahead and take off the... Uh, the cooler and put on fresh compound. I may do that while I'm in here. Oh, by the way, if, if you have this model or a similar model, you need to get to the battery. It's right there. It's just held in by some screws and it comes out. There's the uh, the hard drive. Uh, we could also do a, um, a solid state drive upgrade on this computer to make it faster. And so that would be, that's a two and a half inch hard drive. We could put a two and a half inch solid state drive in there, make the computer faster. But over here, We've also got the option to put in a uh, M.2 solid state drive, which would fit in there, come across here and be held in by that screw. And chances are that's an NVMe, given the, uh, the age of this computer. On M.2 solid state drives, they look the same. They're very, very similar, but um, there's two different sorts. There's SATA or NVMe based. NVMe is also called PCI sometimes, PCIe, sorry. Um, and PCIe or NVMe give you faster throughput as far as like data transfer compared to SATA based uh, M.2s. With a SATA based M.2, you get basically the same performance that you would get from a uh, two and a half inch um, solid state drive if you were to replace this. Okay, but we've got the RAM stick in there. Let's, let's see about blowing the dust out of it. gonna hold oh they have a bird there is a feather okay I'm just gonna hold the fan so it doesn't spin too fast and If you want to get yourself one of those electric blowers, they're about 70 bucks on uh, Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and take this off and uh, replace the thermal compound since we're in here. Um, sometimes these are labeled one, two, three, four. I don't see any labels. So what I'm gonna do is just take off one, go to the opposite corner, take it off. And then either of these don't really matter, which I take off first. Uh, looks like the fan is held in separately, so this may just come out. Yeah. Okay. It looks a little dried up. So probably a good idea. Give it a fresh layer of compound. So I'll just come in here and scrape off what's there. If you want to be really thorough with this, you can um, get some isopropyl alcohol and really, really clean. I think just taking the vast majority off and then putting on fresh is 
good enough. And when you're wiping off the uh, the dye, you want to be very careful not to uh, put too much pressure on the outside. See all these little components around the edge? If you knock any of those off, it's not going to work anymore. So basically, you just want to take the thermal compound off of the, uh, the CPU dye itself, which is the big thing in the metal, because that's the part that gets hot, and that's the part that touches the, uh, the cooler. So, it's good. Don't bother taking off all the little bits around the edges. It's fine. So on this, what I usually do is, if it's a square die, I put a dot in the middle. Um, if it's a elongated, like re rectangular die, I will put a line. Now you can go in there and spread that with some kind of implement, um, you know, whatever you want to use. I don't do that. What I do is I just put the cooler back in place, and by tightening the cooler down evenly, it will evenly spread out that compound. So I'm just going to get each of the screws started. Tighten them down. Kind of just going diagonally. Those are most of the way tight. Now I'm going to go back and really tighten them down. If you want to get yourself one of these powered screwdrivers, I will put a link in the description of the video to... Um, it's not made by Hitachi anymore, it's a different company, but it's essentially the same thing. And the great thing about this is you can control how much torque is put down. Uh, right now it's uh, on setting one, which is the least amount of torque. If you uh, have something you really, really want to tighten down, you can change it over to a varying degree all the way up to 21 on this. They should have made it 11, it would have been hilarious if you get that reference. But one is what I generally use on laptops because it doesn't put too much pressure on the screws. And more importantly, too much pressure on the uh, the nuts that the screws are very often embedded in, which uh, are embedded in plastic. And the plastic breaks, you got problems. All right, well, let's go ahead and put it back together. You can see how cracked up it is. There's a break there, there's a break there. I think I saw another one over here. But it's pretty much all cosmetic stuff. All of the, uh, the screws are tight, feel good, uh, it's just a little busted up plastic, no big deal. Alright, so I'm just pushing down all around, and we will go back and put all the screws in. Let's go ahead and slot in the DVD drive, and put it screw in. So this is the bottom one. It still has its adhesive uh, strip on it. Put one side in. Sometimes when you take these off, they'll stretch out a little bit, so they end up being a little bit longer than they do, need to be. So I generally put one side in, put the other side in, and just kind of, kind of cinch it down, and it will usually find its way to stay where it's supposed to. All right, and then this, it's adhesive strip separated. So I'm going to lay it down first.
All right, and then same deal with this guy. Put in one side, go to the other, make sure it's in, and then kind of pat it down. Right, so it should now, with the new RAM stick, boot back into Windows and be good to go. We'll see. All right, there's the three dots spinning around. It's probably too quiet for y'all to hear, but I can hear the drive in it accessing. It's trying to get into Windows. Okay, so I let it try and boot up for a very long time, and it did finally come to an error message. Um, it's a blue screen. At the bottom, stop code is critical process died and it's at 0% complete, and ordinarily the computer would count up to 100% restart and then try booting again, but it's not doing that. I'm thinking what happened is when the RAM failed, it uh, corrupted Windows to the point where it's not going to boot up. I talked to the client, and what they want me to do is put in a um, M.2 solid state drive into that M.2 slot, reinstall Windows, and then copy over their files from the hard drive. So I'm just going to hold down the power button until it turns off. About five seconds usually. There it went. And let's open this back up again. I shouldn't have put the screws in. So I looked up the model number of the computer again, and it uh, doesn't mention an NVMe uh, or M.2 slot um, in the description of the specs at all. Um, so what I did is I did um, a search, just a Google search for the model number, which again is 15-DB0061CL and the word NVMe or the, the term NVMe. And what I found is a listing on a UK website for memory, uh, RAM, and SSD upgrades saying that this model does indeed have an NVMe M.2 slot in it, um, as opposed to a, a SATA one, an SATA one, which we knew it had an M.2 because we looked at it, but there was a question as to whether it was SATA based or NVMe slash PCIe based. But according to that website, it is a NVMe, otherwise known as PCIe M.2 slot. So we will put one of those. So we will put a M.2 NVMe slash PCIe solid state drive in and reinstall windows on it let's see i do need to turn it over and get the clicks one of the clips popped Let's go this way with it first. So now I should be able to kind of grab it from the back and work it around. There we go. Okay. 
so there is the M.2 slot, which we believe is a NVMe slash PCIe. It comes with a screw, which is nice. I'm going to take the screw out. So he currently has a, um, a one terabyte hard drive in here. Doesn't look like there's any screws holding it in. It's just lifting up and taking that out. We're not going to put this back in just because he's not going to need the extra space. And the possibility of this failing is, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility. And also, you know, possibly failing in the future, which could cause other problems. So what I'm going to do is um, once I get Windows up and running, we're going to connect this hard drive to, uh, to the laptop with a, uh, a USB to SATA cable which looks like this. So it's USB on one side and SATA on the other, and we're going to transfer over their files. So they agreed to a 500 gigabyte solid state drive. I've got a Samsung here, and it is a NVMe M.2. I'm just gonna open it up. All right, so it only goes in one way. There's a, uh, a notch in it there that matches up with a bit of plastic. And on some, um, some systems, you kind of put it in at a 30 degree angle, kind of like that. But on, on this laptop, it looks like more of a straight in kind of thing. So I'm just kind of lay it into place fairly flat and give it a push. And then that screw will go in and hold it in place. Just like that. All right, so I'm going to just kind of put the bottom on, but not really clip it in place, just in case I have to go back in for some currently unseen reason. So I can give it power. open her up and turn it on. And as it is right now, it's not going to do very much because it doesn't have an operating system on it because we removed the drive that had Windows 10 and it's a blank M.2 we just put in. So boot device not found. And it talks about uh, hard drive and going to system diagnostics. But the next step is just to put in a uh, Windows 10 installer, USB thumb drive, and restart the computer. And I'm just gonna press Control Delete to do that. It should see that as a bootable drive and start the installation process. All right, there's the spinning dots. And here we go. All right, so go to Next. Install now. And if your computer came with Windows 10 or sometimes with Windows 8 um, as well, it won't ask you to put in a 25 digit key. It uh, gets it from the motherboard. It's built in. So that works on Windows 10 and Windows 8. You can even have a computer that came with Windows 8 and its, uh, it's key will be good enough to uh, allow you to install Windows. It won't even ask you for a 25 digit code or what version of Windows. I'm gonna do custom install. And there's the 500 gigabyte solid state drive. I'm just gonna click new and it will create its, uh, the partitions it needs to. If you wanna create your own copy of Windows 10, as far as uh, an installer, one of these, if you go to Google, and do a search for download Windows 10. You'll find a website from Microsoft with the word or with the, uh, the letters ISO in the title, and that's the one you wanna to go to. You go to that, um, that website, 
and uh, it will walk you through creating one of these. It has to be eight gigabytes in size, and when it's created, it will erase anything that uh, is currently on the flash drive. So uh, know that before you do it. You don't want to accidentally delete your stuff that you have on a flash drive. All right, so it's just going to count up to 100%. It's at 40 right now. Restart a couple of times, and um, we'll pick it up from there. Okay, don't let me hold you up. Just pick the one you want from the list. Okay, so if you want uh, Cortana to stop talking to you, there's an icon down here you can click, and she will not talk anymore. So, United States for region. Let's see, keyboard US, no secondary keyboard. Here it gives you the option to connect to the internet. Um, I don't connect to the internet at this point. If you allow it to connect to the internet right now, it will insist on making you sign into a Microsoft account for your user account in Windows. But if you tell it you don't have it and you're sure you want to continue with limited setup, it then gives you the option to type in uh, the name you want to use. I'm just going to use HP as a placeholder and we can create uh, them a another user account if they like. Next, no password at the moment. For the privacy settings, I turn off everything but location and data diagnostics, or diagnostic data, those two right there. And those move around, by the way. So location, diagnostic data, diagnostic data, the two I leave on, I'll accept. And I'll say not now about Cortana. With that solid state drive, this really shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. All right, when it says almost there, it's done. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get it connected to my Wi-Fi so it can start getting updates for the drivers and for Windows 10. And I will go under here, right-click on the safely remove and eject my USB Windows 10 installer and we will connect up the hard drive. I'll get started on Microsoft Edge. Complete the setup, continue without signing in, and we're there. Okay, so it's talking about uh, detecting the, uh, the drive. So there's the recovery partition. I'm going to go to this PC and double click on Windows. Go to, oh, there's a windows.old folder. While it had the, when it had the problem with the RAM, uh, it may have been trying to upgrade to the latest version of Windows 10. But let's go to, because that's what gets created, is this uh, windows.old folder. Let's go to users. Username is Chris. All right, let's go into that. Whenever you go into um, a Windows folder on another drive um, that's you know kind of separate from uh, the current install of Windows, it, uh, it'll take a few minutes to open it up the first time. And that's pretty normal. While it works on getting that open, I'm actually going to go and create another user account. We go to Start and Settings. Make it full screen, go to Accounts. Family and other users, I'm going to add someone else. I'm going to call the user account Chris, just to uh, keep, keep it consistent. I don't have this. It's, it's kind of it's going to try and get you to sign into a Microsoft account here. But if you choose, I don't have this person's sign in information, and then choose add a user without a Microsoft account, you get it where you can just type in a uh, a username and password. So Chris, I'm not going to put a password. He can add one on later. So next, I'm going to click on that. Go to change account type and change it to administrator so that he can install programs in the future. So I'm actually going to stop that, uh, that process of getting into that, uh, that hard drive. I'm going to switch, go into sign out of the HP account I, I created, and we're going to sign into the Chris account. 
and it's going to go through that same um, account setup process. All right, so same deal. We'll turn off everything but location and data diagnostics. All right, and then back into Windows D user Chris. While it tries to get in there, let's go check out Device Manager. So I'm going to right click on Start and go to Device Manager. And this is a list of all of the hardware in the computer. It looks like it detected just about everything, including the graphics. So that's good. Nothing to add here. Anything that shows up here with an exclamation point on it or under other devices, there'll be a category called other devices. Windows 10 will try and find drivers for them. Um, if it can't, you can go to the manufacturer's website, put in the model number of the computer, and go to driver downloads and download and install the drivers manually. But it looks like it did a good job here, picking up everything. We're still just waiting for uh, to get into the user um, Chris folder so we can copy their files. While it does that, I'm going to go to Microsoft Edge, and we're going to have to set this up again. Oh. This is interesting. I haven't seen this before. Can't update Microsoft Edge. Reinstall Microsoft Edge. Let's do that. All right, so complete. Oh, all right, here we go. Back to the users. We have to click for it to try and do that. All right, so back to Edge. Confirm. Continue without signing in. And we're going to go get the, uh, the Chrome browser and... Uh, mynight.com if I can type I'm kind of typing around the camera enter so this website is mynight.com you can come here you can put a check in any of these softwares they're all free um, I'm just going to do edge I think at this point do get your nynight what that does is it downloads a little installer that when you run it, it will go and get all the programs you told it to and install them for you. And it makes all the, say yes to that, it makes all of the correct decisions as far as uh, where they're installed and uh, things like that. So you don't have to click next, you know, next, 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 make choices, next, 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 and finish. It just does it for you. So that will get done. Let's close out. Let's see if we can get into Chris now. Still not. Still working on it. Sometimes you have to do this several times in order to get in so you can get your files. Let's also go look at Start, Settings, and Updates. Okay, so these are all the updates it's getting for devices and for Windows. Oh, sometimes you have to come in here and manually click and Install now. I'm going to go ahead and do that. When it's doing this, um, installing um, the latest devices, it may find that it already did them. Um, see there in Device Manager, uh, everything was installed. So some of these may fail because they were already installed by Windows automatically before we even came in here and told it to do it. Okay, Chrome's installed, so we can double click on it. And there's Chrome. I'm going to right click on it and pin it to the taskbar so it stays there close it, reopen it, and say set as default, and it will take us to the correct spot in Windows settings, default apps. There we go. And we're going to change the web browser from Chrome, I'm sorry, from Edge to Chrome, to switch anyway. Let's get out of that. Chrome is set up. All right, let's try to go back into Chris again. All right, looks like it might let us in this time. I'm going to drag this over to the side, put it there. I'm going to right click on the file explorer and do another one. We will drag it over to the side so it snaps. And what we're going to need is this PC on the C drive, which is our new solid state drive, users folder, Chris. And once it finally comes up, we'll be able to just drag and drop the, uh, the desktop folder and the documents and downloads and all that thing, all those things from the, uh, from the drive. 
it's going really slow. I'm wondering maybe the uh, the drive in the computer was having a problem as well, and it wasn't just the RAM. This computer was uh, banged around quite a bit, so it wouldn't be that surprising if the drive failed or was in the process of failing. Okay, but this is good. So we got going to drag across, click drag across those. I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and click music, pictures, and videos. And what we'll do is just drag and drop all of them over. And this usually happens a whole lot faster than it is right now. I really do suspect the drive is uh, having a problem. There it goes. Yeah, they didn't have very many files anyway. What they told me is they mainly use it for going online and uh, remoting into their work. So basically email, websites, uh, YouTube, stuff like that, plus uh, remote work. All right, so I'm going to say skip the file name bing.url that we probably copied over from the, uh, the favorites folder. Okay, so if we were to go to these folders now, we would see their files, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I'll do that off camera. Um, but we're doing pretty good here. Let's go back and check. Go to Settings, Home, Updates, and see how it's going. So it's doing a cumulative update for the latest version of Windows 10, and then it'll be ready to restart. All right, I'm going to let it do that. I will come back, shut the computer down, put the screws uh, back in the bottom, and uh, it'll be good to go. Okay, it uh, got done pending uh, restart. So I'm going to go down to start power and tell it to shut off, actually update and shut off. So it should do the first, I want to say 30% of the update on the shutdown. And then when it comes back on, it'll do 30% through 100. Yeah, it says it's restarting. Oh, it, it did turn, oh, wait a minute. Stop, stop, ow. Apparently it restarted instead of shutting down. Huh. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen Windows 10 do that before. Um, it finished the updates and then instead of going to the desktop, it did shut itself off. Um, previous versions of Windows, I believe, um, did the first 30% and then shut off, but whatever. All right. So I'm disconnecting the old drive. Um, just, uh, Unplug power and go around and try clipping this back into place. Going around the perimeter. That's pretty good. This over here is just broke, broke. All right. Close that up. Give it another couple of presses. Yeah, there on the back it needed to be pushed down some more. Yeah, that. That right there that's just cosmetic it's fine all right so this should be the last time we're putting it back together uh, last time i probably used 3x speed get ready for 5x adhesive kind of doubled over on itself. Kind of... Try that again. There we go. So on this model, the, um, the one on the back is thicker and the one on the front is thinner. Take that off and lay 
down. Right. Get the power back and just make sure it boots up and goes into Windows. So yeah, this is a HP model 15DB006 1CL. Um, it wasn't booting into Windows. The diagnostics told us that the RAM stick had failed, which we replaced. It still wouldn't boot into Windows, so we replaced the hard drive with a solid state drive, reinstalled Windows, got all the updates done, and transferred over the client's files using this uh, USB to SATA adapter. And those are about 10 or 12 bucks on Amazon. I will put a link in the description of the video if you need one of these. But yeah, there we go. Thanks for watching.